funny funny thing is I have never seen them. I've never seen Lord of the Rings. You've never wait what? <laughs> never se never seen them. <laughs> you have never seen them. I I have never seen the trilogy of movies. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I think I think we have to stop this interview right now. I think, I think I have to go. <laughs> Oh wow. Oh wow. You're um you blow the mind. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Cinema Talk. I'm your host, Mike McSabe, and this is a show where I interview online personalities and get to know him personally on a deep down level. Today we have Adele a Drover, aka Roll Credits. Thanks for coming Hello. on. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I, I woke up early. It's very early Sunday morning here in Australia, but I woke up and I'm here and I've got my coffee and I'm ready. <laughs> That's good. That's good. You are you are the first Australian to be on this program, so. Oh yay! There you go. Oh <laughs> uh, yes. I'm honored. I'm honored. <laughs> um. So the first question I always ask is, what is the earliest memory when it comes to movies? Ah, oh, the earliest movie memory. Now, <clears throat> if I think back like really, really young. Um, I think it was more about TV than it was about movies. So like growing up as a kid, I think it was all about those TV shows like Sailor Moon and Pokemon and all those nineties shows. But um, if I think about like one movie as a kid that really, really stood out to me because it just opened my eyes in a whole new way it's this it's the animation watership down which oh. has all the rabbits and mm -hmm. then they're all getting kicked out of their warren because of the bulldozers coming into i don't know build property on their warren and it is so violent um and i saw that at a really young age the movie is like rated pg and i'm uh, pretty sure my 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 parents sat me down in front of it because i i really like rabbits i have a rabbit um and they're like, oh, a movie about rabbits. You'll enjoy this. He sat me down in front of the TV, came back an hour later, and I'm sobbing. <laughs> it is so violent and bloody and terrifying for a kid. But it was definitely a movie that uh, I'll never forget. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. I'm just trying to imagine that. Just like, oh, it's my traumatic. God. It's very traumatic. Jesus. Yeah. Especially for a but little was... kid. Yeah, totally. But it kind of, um, I don't know, kind of just really changed my, the way I thought about movies and and uh, and that to give like new perspectives. Even as a kid, you know, seeing something I've never seen before was pretty fascinating. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> God damn. I know. Fucking Terrifying. watership down. Wow. I wasn't, expect that. I wasn't expecting that. Wow. Who, who rated that movie PG? Well, <laughs> the rating system back then was so different compared to now. Like, it's... Because, yeah, PG, like, for that, it's like, oh, my God. I mean, most of, like... PG-13 didn't come out until, like, the late 80s or, like, mid-80s. So, and then Radar came out later on. So, it's right. like, it was interesting to see how animated movies have, got, got their ratings. Have they... um? retrospectively re-rated that movie because I wonder if there's any other children out there who've been scarred for life by watching Watership Down. <laughs> no, there'd probably be a handful. There probably will be. Um, so what was the movie that got you into films in general? Like, you want to know behind the scenes, you know, you look at the all that stuff and the... Yeah, yeah. Well, that's an easy one. Uh, that's <laughs> definitely an easy one. It's The Lord of the Rings. I've actually talked about this before. You, di you did. Um, you did. I know that you did a video on that. I'll probably link that I, video for people who are watching this so they can I, click I, it. Because I was watching it too and I was like, dang it. That's the question I want to ask you. But just like, oh, Lord of yeah. Words. Well, you can go see that video if you want to see like a whole rant about oh. my obsession with Lord of the Rings and how it just it was really pivotal for me because it just 
happened at that time in my life where I was 12, I was 12 years old and just learning about the world. And I kind of like Watership Down, I'd just never seen a movie that had created a whole fantasy universe the way that that movie did. And um, yeah, I was just really interested in it technically, like how they achieved it all. Uh, and then went and watched all that behind the scenes bonus footage um, and collected the DVDs as they were coming out and just watched hours and hours of interview footage and how they did all the prosthetics and how they built all the locations and the sets and uh, yeah, all the actors and everything. Yeah, it was fascinating. Anyway, that was definitely the movie that, uh, that changed it all for me. And I was like, yes, this is what I want to do. I want to be in movies. Like, I want to work in movies. <laughs> funny funny thing is, I have never seen them. I've never seen Lord of the Rings. You've never? Wait, what? Never, se- never seen them. You have never seen them? I, I have never seen the trilogy of movies. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I think, I think we have to stop this interview right now. I think... <laughs> <laughs> oh wow oh wow you're um you blow the mind <laughs> i dropped a bomb of you but yeah i just never like i i appreciate peter jackson like i've seen his other works his early work like oh my god i've seen his early work like oh my god like don't get me started on like meet the feebles or brain dead or oh his yeah. er- his early I- stuff just blew my mind like I was watching Brain Dead with a friend of mine, and that, especially the end, like, what the fuck, Peter Jackson? <laughs> he has a strange mind, doesn't See, he? he? He has such a strange mind, especially as... But then he gets into his fantasy work, which, I mean, I can appreciate. I'm not a huge fan of fantasy, but, I mean, but Lord of the Rings is, like, super long, too. <laughs> like 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 so long it's like do i have it's to so do, long. it's like do yep. i have to watch the whole thing it's like uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh I, yeah and then with the extended editions as well so like an additional hour i think the return of the king is like three hours and 45 minutes it's like super long <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it <laughs> i just like want to spend more time in the in the world in the universe he's created and i'm like i would i would like an extended extended edition a director's cut extended edition <laughs> what, what, um, what do you think about the yeah. hobbit oh the hobbit oh well i don't know why that movie was three movies i think that was a massive cash grab to like split that into three movies but um yeah, no, I wasn't a huge fan. Okay. I, I enjoyed it. I, I watched them and I, I enjoyed them because I like the world and I like the universe. So I just just enjoyed spending a, a bit of time there and having a, a, a movie there. But at the same time, yeah, the movie itself wasn't a great movie. <laughs> anyway. Uh, what is the the most perfect movie you've seen like the best of the best when it comes to everything behind the scenes and just how it's composed and don't say Lord of the Rings <laughs> that's what I was going to say um okay alright alright you got cause, me because there's other movies out there that just are so like yeah. mwah, so beautiful and perfect when it comes to all the okay. elements <laughs> okay um well, I, let me let me talk about something all right. recent yep. because there's so many great movies in all different genres and yep. all different decades that yep. that can epitomize a great movie from that time and space. But uh, the Oscar nominations have just come out, and uh, La La Land has been nominated for 14, 14 Oscars. Yes, which is crazy, but it is a fantastic movie. I just think it is. Look, perfect is a strong word. I know it is. I know it is, but it's just it, it's it's just it's just beautifully crafted. And for that genre, for like a romance musical, it is just stunning. I I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I I can approach it from someone who is generally a musical cynic. I don't usually love musical movies. Um, oh, that's right. And I also don't really like romance movies, like straight romance. <laughs> 
so the fact that this musical romance, I was like, like watching it, like with my eyes wide open, like enthralled from the beginning to end was, it was a pretty big deal. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Well, I can show you this at, at least the soundtrack. Oh, yeah. CD. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's, I've been listening to it on Spotify. Yes. It is just a beautiful soundtrack. Like it is like, ah, uh, the jazz, like, ah, uh, yeah. It, it just melts in, and it, it gives you the old feel of the musicals back in the day, yet trying to be like modern at mm-hmm. the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> There's just... I, it, it's a weird um, mishmash of it feels old worldy, but at the same time, the cinematography and the colors, it, it feels, and yeah. it just feels new as well. So yeah. it doesn't feel like dated old. Yeah. It's a really nice homage to those old musicals. Yeah, I kind of, kind of laughed at the scene where uh, they're at the party and Sebastian's in that cover band. He's playing the keyboard and the, 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 playing guitar. T- the guitar. They're playing Take On Me. And then all of a sudden, Emma, Emma Stone's like, you want to request a song? He's like, I ran so far away. <laughs> this be, cause I'm, a, I'm a huge 80s nut. So when there's an 80s reference, I just go squee. <laughs> No, that was brilliant. That was brilliant. She was adorable in that movie. She just yes. she went for it. She Emma, she's so adorable in it. Oh my god. Yes, yes. Emma Stone uh, for the win. Yes, I could watch her all day. Those big googly eyes, like big blue eyes. Yeah. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Now let's just scrape the bottom of the barrel. Now let's. What's the worst movie you've seen? What is the the crappiest oh. piece of shit you've seen? Like. You know what? I, I, because I review movies, I and even though I try not to watch reviews before I um, go and see the movies, I kind of do like to try and have my own initial impressions without outside influences before I go and see something. It's hard to be protected because you know with the internet, with Twitter, and all of that. Right. You try not to see the reviews, but you know you subconsciously absorb them all. Anyway, my point is that I kind of have been protected from the worst of the worst of movies. Cause I hear such a terrible things. And then I'm just like, nah, <laughs> might give that one a miss. Um, but uh, to keep it recent again, and since seeing as how we're talking about the Oscars, um, here was one that we thought might get some Oscar nomination love and didn't. And I'm kind of glad. And that's the movie Silence. Did you see Silence just I, recently? I have not seen Silence. Well, Silence. I have to say, I was really looking forward to it because it has such a great cast with Adam Driver and Andrew Garfield, and um, it looked really interesting. A set in, uh, I don't know when it's set. It's like 14th century, I'm not sure. Um, Portugal, these Portuguese priests going to bring uh, Catholicism to Japan. It's like, what an unusual little story. It just looked really, like, interesting and quirky. And, um, yeah, Martin Scorsese, I don't I don't know. This is supposed to be his passion project that he's been working on for decades, and it was such a flop, I think. It was, yeah, super boring. And, yeah, anyway. So it's not the worst of the worst. It's not a piece no, of shit. No, but no, it's, it's like not even it's like it's like it's like in the middle it's like it's like in the but middle sometimes look sometimes in the middle is even worse because the fact that this is his passion project and he spent decades on it and he's got these amazing talented actors and the movie's just like man like how is that not worse <laughs> i mean some people might argue about that i mean people i've i've seen people who like silence too i've seen seen some praise about it but too. so yes you're not really yes so no it wasn't the worst thing ever no, i just no, right. I, I, I especially from such an incredible director director yeah um i was definitely expecting something a little bit more special or well, interesting maybe anyway. maybe he's losing his touch who knows maybe maybe mm. yeah. here's what the latest video game teenage mutant ninja turtles looks like on nintendo mondo to the max cowabunga tubular Radical. And here's what it looks like on Sega. 
So if you want to catch the awesome Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in action, you'd better buy Nintendo. Because the only turtles you'll get on Sega are these. Nintendo, the entertainment system with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, alright, so how did you get into making videos on YouTube? Okay. Um, uh, how did I, how did it all come about? How did it start? Let me cast your mind back. Let me take you back. It was uh, three, I think it, it, it's been three years now. Yeah, it has been, yes. Um, three years since I've been making videos and uh, it all really started because um, I was living in Los Angeles at the time. I was there for a couple of years and <clears throat> at the time, yeah, I was living there. I was not working. I was kind of between jobs uh, was because of the way my visa was. It was really restricting with um, work and everything. So it was between jobs. I was seeing a lot of movies, <laughs> a lot. A lot. Lemley NoHo 7, shout out. Anyone there in uh, North Hollywood? That was my local cinema. And I was seeing so many movies. And uh, to be honest, I um, I didn't really have a lot of friends. So <laughs> I turned to the internet. <laughs> um, I just didn't have many people that I could talk to talk to about all these like awesome movies I was seeing. And then I um, went online. I was like watching a lot of reviews and stuff and didn't feel like there were um, – all that many like females out there reviewing movies like not that many and so yeah I kind of wanted to jump in and add my add my piece and that's kind of how it all started I kind of actually remember way before you actually did your views on your channel I remember you were reacting to certain videos with a certain somebody yes with uh, with the uh, Greg Alba from, from the, the Real Real Re Rejects. Yes. I, I yeah. that's where I first saw you. It was like one of those reaction videos when he did them, yeah. and then and then I kind of watched you move to your channel. It's like that's I was like wow, what a transition between that and that. You know, I don't I don't even do trailer reactions on my channel. <laughs> no, you don't. That's the funny thing. It's like she was just transferred. Just... It's completely different. I know, <laughs> but um, that that was that was so much fun, and I think I gained quite a bit of momentum through um featuring on his channel for a few of his trailer reactions yeah so what did we do i think we did um big hero six and uh i don't know like a whole bunch of trailer reactions yeah um was... yeah it was, that was good fun that was good fun that was good i was just like um so out of all the videos you made all of them what is your favorite you made like you liked how it went out and the, the, the way you were doing it um i think my favorite video um probably there were two last year that i was really pleased about and that was a um movie uh there were the videos talking about the oscars so um for the last couple of years like two years and i think we're going to do it again this year i'm part of a little group that are called we love the oscars and um, it's a bunch of movie reviewers and, you know, people um, who talk about movies and we all do an Oscars ballot and try and predict who's going to win all the categories at the Oscars. And uh, as it turned out, I, I didn't really know who to pick, but, you know, I was doing my ballot on camera and I'm like trying to go through it the category by category and I just was like, oh... I don't know. So pretty much for everything, I just picked Mad Max Fury Road because not only did I love that movie, but it's an Australian movie. So I was like Mad Max Fury Road. Um, and I picked it for a whole bunch of categories and then um, it won all those categories. And then I ended up winning the whole ballot out of <laughs> like 20 odd YouTubers. I think I picked 18 of the 18 winners out of the 24 categories or something like that. Anyway. So I was pretty pleased. <laughs> it was a total, total fluke, total fluke. But um, I will take it. And then as penance, uh, as part of it all, as, it's because it's a, a game and a challenge, all the other YouTubers who participated have to make a video um, congratulating me for winning. And so, like, for a whole month there were people, like, <laughs> saying congratulations for winning the Oscars ballot 
Uh, I remember that. That was so. That was that was a good time. That was just. <laughs> that was a good time. So I'm not sure if I like. I kind of want to semi bow out undefeated because um I'm scared to to go back in there because that's never gonna happen again. Nope, nope. I'm gonna back away, back away. I did it once. I'm good. I, Don't want to ruin I my luck. Exactly. There's no way. There's, <laughs> There's no, no way, way I can do that again. There's no there way. was no. There was no logic to those um those that ballot. So no. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that was uh, fun. Speaking speaking of Australian movies, uh, since you're from Australia, uh, what Australian movies could you recommend for those non people who don't know films from Australia? Hmm. Do you know many films from Australia? Uh, God, I've the most common ones, the most popular ones are Mad Max, the obvious ones. Um, uh, there's one film. There's one film, oh, what the fuck is it called? There's one from the 80s I was looking at, and it was just, um... The 80s and 90s were the best for Australian cinema. There is no doubt about it. There oh, was yeah. a <laughs> lot more money, government money, and incentive to make films here in this country, and some brilliant ones came out in those decades. Um, come back to me on what that one what that one is but in the meantime um uh so the 90s i think i love 90s australian movies probably the best um and the classic one which always makes me smile is called uh priscilla queen of the desert um and it's got <laughs> it's of course got Hugo Weaving, it's got guy pierce and about these you know drag queens who dress up and do the full drag show and they are going on an adventure through the middle of the harsh ass Australian unforgiving desert in this big decked out bus and uh, a bit of a road trip movie, but the singing and dancing and glitter, so much glitter and sequence and amazing costumes and yeah, Hugo weaving. Oh, so good. Highly, highly recommend. If you've never seen Australian movie before, <laughs> start with that one. <laughs> Of course, for Priscilla, of course. <laughs> Razorback. It was Razorback. Oh, yeah, that's a monster movie, right? Yeah, that's a, it's a, with a boar in Australia. Because it was directed mm -hmm. by uh, R Russell McLarkey, who did Highlander later on. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so it was just, uh, it was like, oh, the killer boar. Watch out for the killer boar in Australia. <sighs> kind of thing. We have... We have boars in Australia. <laughs> I, I guess so. Like it's, I, it's. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. We do. Yeah, I have to rewatch it then because I just like <laughs> Razorback. Um, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's that's a quite a featured monster movie. We do some good monster movies. Oh I think. yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> I keep. I th wasn't there, Howling Three: The Marsupials. Oh my god, that one had like where kangaroos in that one. And I, was... oh. <laughs> I remember that one too because it was set in Australia. Oh, oh my god. god, not where kangaroos. Oh my goodness. Oh. That just popped in my head. It's just like, oh yeah, it's like, uh, okay. Oh. oh, that sounds that sounds terrible. There, there's there's actually a nice documentary that's out there that talks about all about uh, Oz pollution, like all about the Australian movies. It's a uh, yeah. Uh, it's a, it's not quite Hollywood. It's Ozploitation. It's, it has a lot of interviews with people talking about Australian movies, especially I think Quentin Tarantino's in that documentary talking about his favorites yeah. as well. So it's a great documentary if you want to get he, into Australian films. Yeah. Quentin Tarantino is a huge fan of Australian cinema. He was here last year promoting The Hateful Eight, and I went and saw him um, do a talk, and he's just such a huge um, fan of yeah Australian cinema, especially of that era like the 90s yeah. um 80s 90s i think that's uh, he grew up on a lot of films um aussie films from that time yeah what's your favorite director Ooh, favorite director oh that's that's way too tough way too tough uh one of them that i really enjoy is wes anderson i just love mm. his mind mm -hmm. i just think he's just he his his slate of movies just all have a similar quality and I just feel like, yeah, he opens up a world in a really funky um, alternative way. So I really, I always get a kick out of his films. Yeah, he's, he's pretty uh, cool.
cool with what he does with his movies. I've only yeah. seen like Fantastic Mr. Fox. I have yet, mm. like, just yet to see his other work. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm only 27. I'm working. I'm watching all, <laughs> all the movies in the world. I'm getting there, oh, people. There's, there's so there's many. Fun. There's so many I need to catch up on. I mean, I will eventually watch Lord of the Rings. I will promise you that. See, but this is the thing, though. Like, with some movies, with some movies, there are, there are time and a place. And you watch it now, and, you know, the CG's dated a little bit, and... <laughs> You know, it, it was it was the t- it was two thousand and one. That was the time. <laughs> right, I understand that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm always going to feel nostalgic about them. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'd be interested to see how they resonate now to first time viewers. Yeah, know? that'd be cool. I mean, I've I've seen so many bad movies. I've seen so many like special effects of bad CGI, and I mean, I can't be worse than that. So it's just. <laughs> No, Gollum's pretty good. You know, didn't he win some awards? Um, Andy, that was yeah, Andy, Andy Circus. Circus won awards for yeah, that. Andy Circus, yeah. Is, is there any upcoming movies you're excited to see? Yeah, actually, yes. There's one that I'm very, very excited. Well, I, currently I'm making my way through the um, Best Picture nominations at the, for the Oscars. Right. Um, because there's quite a few that I haven't seen out of that list. Um, and one of the ones that I think I'll really, really, really enjoy, which I, I'm, I'm going to try and watch today, maybe tomorrow, it's um, Manchester by the Sea. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think they'll win a few things. I mean, just from what I've heard, the buzz has been pretty tremendous. And, yeah, I am really looking forward to that. Have you seen that one? I have not. I've, mm. Have you I... seen many of the Oscars? that's the thing that's the thing though i try to watch as many movies as i can because what we do on the podcast we uh we try to watch as much movies as we can from all the years so if we just did our 2016 in review and it's in two parts that took us that long to talk about all the movies yeah and, i saw them it's like an hour each yeah <laughs> yeah so and we try we try to like we have like eight categories we talk about you know certain things with movies and stuff like that and there's even we talked about Netflix Netflix stuff too because there was a lot of stuff in Netflix in 2016. There was some mm. good stuff in there, but mind you, I, didn't, I haven't seen La La Land when I did that. So after the podcast, I went to see La La Land. I was like, "That's the best movie of 2016." <laughs> I know it's fabulous. It's because fabulous. because I saw The Jungle Book. I I was a huge fan of The Jungle Book last year Loved and. It. And, I, and I, I just had a commotional connection to it. I was crying in the theater because I grew up with the original movie. So yeah. I just yeah. loved it for what it was. And Manchester by the Sea, I just, I saw it and I was looking at the trailer. It's like, do I really watch that? I mean, I know it's Casey Affleck. He's doing his thing. and But it's not my cup of tea. Like, I'm very picky when it comes to movies. Mm-hmm. And that's fair enough. I mean, a lot of, you know, there's a trend lately, like... Not lately, lately, probably in movies in general, there's a trend that the more depressing and sad and gut wrenching you can make your movie, <laughs> right? And sometimes, you know, sometimes you just want a bit of la la land, and you just don't want to put yourself through the trauma of, uh, yeah, of a depressing movie. <laughs> it has to be depressing. It has to, you know, it has to be emotional. You know, you just you just can't have you just can't have comedies or some some strange reason. Um, <laughs> Um, there's, I've actually made a separate video talking about my, uh, anticipated movies of this year as well, which I have right here, but, Mm -hmm. uh, like, like I said, there's a couple sequels that are on there and, um, the main sequel I want to see is Blade Runner 2049. Mm, yes. Dennis. Ryan Gosling's in that. Yes. Ryan Gosling's going to be in that and here's the Ford comes back and then the director of, um, Dennis DeVoot. Dennis Villeneuve. Villeneuve, yeah. Villeneuve. He's, he's a, I, I liked his work too because I saw Sicario a couple years back. That was a really good movie he did. And he did Arrival mm-hmm. last year, which I have yet to see. Um, so I will kind of see what he does with the sequel for Blade Runner. There's um, mm. da, 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 da. Well, well, there was a couple other ones that uh, Spider Man Homecoming is another one I want to see. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah, I think uh, that'll be fun. Uh, kind of want to see where they go with Kong Skull Island. 
King Kong Skull Island. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of kind of intrigued about the Ghost in the Shell with Scarlett Johansson. I don't know. People are like really controvert, very controversial. Like, oh, you're whitewashing. You can't have a white actress play a. It's like, oh, God. yeah. Calm down. <laughs> calm uh, down. Uh, I mean, I do believe there is such a thing as whitewashing, but also it's um, it's a Hollywood movie. You know, it's not like it's. Uh, I'm, I don't really want to get into it. It's it's a whole it's a whole conversation. It it, it is. It's just it's so. Stupid. It's, I just like it's ridiculous. So ridiculous, I tell you. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, there's a lot of good movies. Um, actually, that's that's a video that I'm working on myself. I'm doing the the top ten um, anticipated movies for 2017. Hmm. Is that one of your upcoming videos you're working on? <laughs> Why? It sure is. <laughs> Jeez. You're teasing it. You're just teasing us because that's that's one of the questions. Like, yeah, any upcoming videos besides that? <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, that's what I'm actually working on now. And yeah, the, I mean, some of the movies you just mentioned are on there, and okay. it's more like a an overview of just some things I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Um, and then some of the movies I mentioned are movies that we don't even know anything about that have only kind of oh just those started. yeah those you know where you just know the director and the talent yeah. and you don't even really know what it's about but um that's true yeah yeah i don't don't even touch those because i just want to i was like i don't know it's like i want to see yeah, like but that's, but... This, that's, this, that's this speculation it's like i think you know i trust this director i think these actors are good so hopefully what they do is good <laughs> But just you don't want to trust it, trust it, because you never know, it might be a letdown in the end. I know, this is, well, this is true. This is the movie Gamble that we'd live by. <laughs> Shake those guys and see what happens. Exactly. Um, uh, any animated movies uh, last year did you really enjoy? Um, I finally just watched Moana. Oh, um, okay. Just watched that a couple of days ago, actually. Um, and that was cute. It wasn't, um, I don't know, it wasn't uh, as impactful as I thought it might be, but um, it was quite sweet. Uh, and then, yeah, Zootopia is in there for a nomination for Best Animated Feature. And Yeah, it is. I don't know if it's nomination worthy. It's, it's super cute. And I love rabbits, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so there's a rabbit character in there, and I think that's oh awesome. Oh boy. But um, but uh, yeah, nah. I don't know if it's nomination worthy. Because a lot of um, people love Zootopia. Like it's one of, it's a lot of people. Well, then why why isn't Finding Dory in there? Because it's a Finding sequel. Dory was on it's a, par. It's a sequel. I don't think I any. I, I mean, in recent years, and not a lot of sequels get nominated. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is true. Um, but there is one that's nominated, which is definitely worth mentioning, and that's The Red Turtle. Yes. Um, yeah. And that's Studio Ghibli yeah. film. Ghibli film. Yeah. Um, and there's no dialogue. Yes, I know. I've seen it. It's just, oh. Uh, it's it, beautiful. It, the animation's beautiful. There's no dialogue. I mean, well, dialogue. There's like, hey, hey. Yeah. There's a couple of words. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of words in there, but it's, yeah, it's no. Oh, it's all it's through just, visuals. Yeah, it's really nice actually. Oh, that got me. Yeah, I, I was. I had tears in my eyes by the end of it. That really was stunning. I was like kind of dumbfounded by it. I was watching it. I was like, okay, not okay. The turtle. Okay. Da, da. That happened. Wait, hot, why? Hot? Wait, what? Wait, what? what? That happened. <laughs> and then at the end, I was like. Wait, what? Yeah, so I know, it, me too. It, I was crying. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, anyway. it's one of those movies that, like, it's out It's out now, people. It's it's just, just go watch it. Go watch it. And, you know, if that one takes home Best Animation, I'd be so pleased. I, yeah, I would think, but a lot of people are rooting for Kubo and the Two Strings to win. Cause I haven't seen it yet. Oh, yeah. come on. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Kubo. Yeah. I, I think I think technically that one's supposed to be like, like, cause it's stop motion, right? Yeah. 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 It's Leica Studios. I yeah. Leica. Yeah. It's stop motion. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's it's underrated because, mind you, not a lot of people seen it when it first came out. It's, yeah. like, it has a low box office number, so it didn't get a lot in the box office. So it's it's really worth checking out. There's quite a few movies going on. Um, so for anybody who's watching who wants to become a video producer, such as yourself, well, you got any tips for them to just start off and how to make their videos, so... You mean on YouTube? Yeah, on YouTube in general. Yeah, on YouTube. Okay. okay. Any tips? Tips. Yeah. Look, tips. I, 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 I think just apart from just starting, you know, just starting. Like even if you don't have the right equipment, you don't have the right camera, you don't have the right lighting. I think just biting the bullet and starting is the biggest hurdle, and then. Once you have posted those first couple of terrible videos, which they'll be terrible, inevitably, you know, they'll be terrible, but that's okay because they're up there and you've done them and you've completed them. And then from there, it's about slowly building up your creative style and, you know, getting some better equipment and all of that process. But if, um, I think just starting is the, the hardest part, <laughs> just being able to turn on a camera and sit yourself in front of it. Um, and just learning to talk to yourself by yourself in a room. <laughs> it's harder than you think. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is. But yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, one day, maybe a bit further down the track, I'm going to do um, a video called Reacting to My Old Videos, and I'm going to go back and watch. Because they're like shocking. Shocking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, know. I love those kind Ter of videos. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just to see. So oh, that was me? Like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Yeah. I even have some that I've, I've um, changed, switched to private on my enroll credits in the video. So they're pro But they're still there. They still exist. So one day when I do a reacting to my, my old videos, I will bring them back to life just to react to them because. You know, it was a it was a stage in my life. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not ashamed of them. I'm not proud of them. But um, yeah, it'll be good content and hilarious content one day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any any final words before just any anything at all before we end off? Just any <sighs> well, um, no, this has been great. It's been really fun. Thanks for, for getting me up and out of bed on Sunday morning and coming to chat to you about movies. And um, I think uh, it's, you know, it's Oscar season now for the next few weeks, for the next month. So, um, yeah, looking forward to, like, making some more videos talking about the Oscars and um, maybe some of the controversy behind the Oscars, but also just having a bit of fun with it and remembering not to take it too seriously. You know, uh, I'd also like to make a video, I think, talking about what would win the Adele Oscars, as in <laughs> movies that I personally think really deserve to win. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't know. Thanks for having me on, Mike. It's been really fun. Yeah, it is. Um, the Adele Awards. Adele Awards. The, the Adele Awards. <laughs> the, Adele, the, Adele. the Adele goes to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah thank you so much please subscribe to her check out her channel her videos they're great for any of those cinephiles out there like i am just looking for reviews like that she's great and uh yeah thanks for watching cinema talk and uh i'll see you guys in the next video thanks bye <laughs>